Hello everyone! I hope you're all having a wonderful day. In this video, I will show you how I introduce a new horse, and in this case Mustang, to leading by the feet. Now I believe this is the last video I got a chance to film with Nora and Stargazer. I had them in work for quite a few weeks after this, but I just ran out of time for filming while I was in Florida, so this is the last video that I have kind of on their um, training with me. So you can see here with Nora, she's still a little bit nervous about that approach, so I'm just showing you guys how I work on it. In every single session, I still work on that approach and release just to kind of build her confidence with it. Of course, as soon as I get up to her, she's pretty good about me putting the halter on. There's no real big issues there, but I still try to be a little bit, not cautious, but mindful of her and her confidence with me in her space, and I try to work on that every session before I get to advancing to the next thing. I try to keep each session a little bit enjoyable and engaging for the horse, so I might switch it up and not always work on the same thing for a long period. Ideally, I want to kind of send them on. So you can see even with my lead rope there, I was kind of cueing her shoulder to step up. I'm just snapping a picture from her owner really quick. And I want to have my lead rope pretty light on her face. Because again, everything I'm trying to do, I want to get as the lightest cue possible and the lightest ask possible. So another cool thing about the pedestal, and I'm not sure if I show it in this clip, but it also helps you teach them how to back up. So instead of having them come off the front, I'll usually go up to them and I'll kind of bump on their halter and teach them how to give the pressure that way and step down off of the block. I also like to see their reaction when they get into a weird situation and aren't going to necessarily panic, like when their one foot is up there and I'm just seeing how she reacts to that but staying pretty calm. So that time I did just have her step off the side but I do recommend having them back off of it as well. It's great prep for trailer loading. I find leading by the feet to be an extremely useful tool again to teach your horse how to give pressure but also to teach them how to not panic if they get into a situation that stresses them out and if I can teach them this in a controlled environment and help them work through it and know what a healthy response is, then that's always better than having them, you know, figure it out on their own if they ever get cast or caught up in a fence somewhere by mistake. What I'm doing right now is just prepping her for the rope. We've done a lot of this already. I'm just doing a lot of rope desensitizing, tossing it over her back, and the same kind of swift rhythmic motion around her legs. You can tell even sometimes on that offside, you saw her rock back there, so I will try to continue to work on approach and release with her. I try to get them comfortable with me touching their chest and their legs all over. The way that I introduce petting them on a new body part is I start with a part that they're familiar with. So example here would be her neck. 
and then I reach down to her shoulder, which may be a new part for her, and then I go back up to the neck. I almost make it seem like an accident that I touch that new body part. This is especially important when working with ears for the first time. If you have a horse that's a little bit head shy, you can kind of help them through it by not just going and directly touching the ear, but kind of like rubbing the face and then quickly just running your hand over the ear in like half a second and then just leaving it at that and going back and kind of repeating kind of having it be like a mistake or an accident touching it that way they realize that you're not going to hurt them same thing here when i'm introducing a new body part i kind of just accidentally touch that new part and then go back to the familiar part and i'm like oh that's funny that we touched the new part and you know it was all okay what you'll need for leading by the feet is a halter doesn't really matter which a lead rope attached to that um and i only really recommend that for Mustangs that maybe need a little bit more guidance if they're still early on in their gentling journey. For a domestic horse, really we should be able to teach them how to lead by the feet without the lead rope on the head. The whole point is to not necessarily pull on that lead rope to teach them how to move. It's going to be to pull on the rope that is around their leg to teach them. So she was a little nervous there with me introducing the new rope, so I have to make sure I'm able to kind of rub it over her body and her legs before I put it around her leg and when she backed up there I just stuck with her until she stopped moving and then I released and then walked her back forward so I'm touching kind of that goofy spot right now which is I guess you would call it like their armpit their little elbow area there a lot of them are really sensitive. You can tell even her knee is unlocked when I'm going to do it right now. The best way to work through that is, again, repetition. Make sure that you stay safe, but also if your horse is, like, kind of reaching that threshold there, you have to be respectful of that. And, you know, you need to push them a little bit into that new comfort zone, but you also don't want to push them to the point where they get scared and it backtracks them. Now I'm working on getting around the back side of the leg so I can bring it in between. Once I have that rope around the leg, you're going to see I kind of shimmy it up and down. An alternative, if you can't get that close to your horse at this point, but I do recommend being able to at least lead them before you try to lead by the feet, would be to make a loop on the ground and have them step into it. I do this a lot when I'm introducing them picking up the hind feet instead of getting really close down there with my hands and my head where they might be a little unpredictable because they're worried about something touching their hind leg. I usually just make a loop on the ground, have them step into it that way, and then I can kind of desensitize the leg with the rope. So I thought that was a fantastic response. Now I will say that Nora already knows how to pick up her front feet, but I have not stretched them forward before. I've only picked them up like in the normal way. So you're going to keep your lead rope nice and loose. And then with the leg rope, you're going to add a little bit of pressure and wait till they lift. And the goal is to lead them forward with it as soon as they kind of softly, gently place that foot down in front of where it was before, you release all tension in that rope. And like I said, it does help if they know how to lead because she at least kind of knows how to follow me too. So while I'm lifting the leg up and I'm walking backwards she's already thinking about following me without that lead rope pressure so you notice now I have a little bit of a twist in that rope and I like to try to keep the rope like this because if I really need to I can let go of it and it's going to come off completely it's not going to be dragging with her or anything which I do believe they need to get used to dragging objects but I try not to put everything at once to not make it a scary scenario but if it is kind of slipping up the leg like it was before, how it kind of got to her knee area, you just add a few twists in it and it stays on a little bit better. Not only is this good for teaching your horse to bring their leg forward for the barrier and not really fight, but you also can have a little bit more leverage with a horse that maybe does want to move their leg around some more. You can really unstick their feet like this. And now that I'm thinking of it, I don't know if Nora actually has had her feet picked up before at this point when I videoed it. I'm a little bit, I'm a lot of bit behind in editing. But typically before I pick up their feet, I do this with them. 
just to kind of teach them how to respond to the rope. Again, I can have more leverage that way if they are really trying to run away and they're nervous, I don't necessarily have to let the foot drop if I'm holding it with my hand. I can keep up a little bit better when I have the rope. And now that I am looking at how I'm doing this and watching the video, I realize that she hasn't picked up her feet before. So this is actually a really fantastic response from a horse that really hasn't had their legs messed with too much before. Normally they're kind of swinging them around at this point. So what I try to do is once I'm able to get closer and they understand how to lead by the foot coming forward, I'll ask them to pick it up kind of the backwards way, the way that we would normally hold a hoof up to pick it out. And I bounce the leg around a little bit with the rope just to see how they respond to you know some movement there. And then I'll try to go in hold the hoof itself and rub the rope around on the leg because eventually I'll want to rub my hand around on the leg and I can either take the rope off like that or take it off all the way around the front of the leg. Similar to where the rope was at, I'm going to add a little bit of pressure from my hand. And I do want you to be careful with your lead rope here if you are working with a wild one. Again, leading by the feet is good for any horse that kind of needs to give to pressure in a new way. And if you want to teach them how to hobble one day or just be a little bit safer out there if they do get stuck. But it's also good for teaching a new horse like Mustang how to pick up their feet. So I try to lift the foot in a similar way to how the rope would lift it. And then I'm just going to be able to hold the leg and rub my hand all over it. Now I do find some of these horses like to be introduced to touch on the leg while you're holding the foot rather than trying to do it with their foot down the whole time. Again, it's all about reading your horse and kind of understanding what they're telling you and what they're most comfortable starting with. I do believe in this video I only show leading by the front feet. I try to do the first session with the front feet and then the second session I start with the front and then I do the hind as well. And the hind feet would kind of be the exact same thing. You would either pull them a little bit more forward to get them to step forward or you could even ask them to back up that way however I do think it's beneficial to teach a horse how to back up pretty softly with the lead rope in the halter before you ask with the hind legs good anytime she gives to that pressure I kind of let her step forward into it and she gets that instant release The other thing you can do if you have a horse that's getting really stuck and even isn't lifting up their foot from the pressure of the rope, you're going to go not necessarily directly forward, but just like you would if you were teaching one how to lead. If you go directly forward with a horse, sometimes they can just lean back on that pressure and sit and not really give in. But if you go to the side, it kind of puts them a little bit off balance and makes them more likely to take a step. So this side she's a little bit more sensitive with. She's wanting to take the leg back more. But you have to believe me, this is a really good horse at this. Some of them react much bigger. She's actually not being a great example for me to show you what to do if your horse is reacting bigger. But I'm really, really pleased with how she's doing and she's taking all of this awesome. Same thing, gonna stand by her side and ask her to pick it up from behind. Another new thing when we're doing this is now we're standing close to them while we mess with the legs. When we're leading them by the legs, we're definitely having a distance between us and that leg, but now they have to get used to holding their leg in a new position with us right next to it, and then eventually we start going in and touching the leg. Luckily by this point, I'm already able to kind of touch her neck and her withers. So it's not too bad because I have to stand pretty close to her for that. However, if you're trying to do this with one that's pretty feral, you won't be able to get this close and you'll probably have to use that method of making the loop with the rope for them to step into it to catch their leg. 
and then when you take it off you're probably going to have to take a stick of some sorts or like a lunge whip or a dressage stick and kind of put that in the end to loosen up the rope so they can step out of it too. Ideally though you'll be able to already lead your horse by then it just makes the process a lot quicker and again they already know how to get to pressure in one way at this point. Make sure if you do drop that lead rope when you go to pick up the foot that your horse's nose is still a little bent around to you and that you're just very aware and paying attention if you need to pick up that rope to make them move their hindquarters away. Next up we have Mr. Stargazer who it's crazy to watch this back right now because you can see they still have all those mud balls on them and it's funny I just brought them both home not too long ago and they're already completely clean and they're shedded out into their summer coats so it's just interesting to see them like this still where they're a little bit woolly and covered in all of the holding pen dirt. So here again desensitize into that rope over them and no you don't have to have the best aim for this and yes I did have the rope go over his head was it intentional no was it okay yes because a lot of this is just getting them used to weird random things and I'm tossing the rope soft so it's not like it actually like hurt him or caused any pressure impact but he does need to get used to things coming over him because essentially that's just like a halter or a lead rope getting tossed over his back and sometimes if it misses he has to get used to the fact that people miss sometimes so it's just some more head desensitizing. This horse is really cool because his releases are very evident. He is a big licker and chewer when he's releasing. I find the safest position when I'm starting to introduce a rope to touching their chest or the front legs is kind of standing at that 45 degree angle from them. So and you can tell right now, is he okay with the rope going over? Eh, he's tolerating it I would say. I would say he's not comfortable with it yet. You can tell every time he's tensing up, you can see it through his body and he's lifting his head and neck and the whole top line is tensing up. Sometimes he even twitches his skin and coat away from it. But we all have to start somewhere so then maybe in the next session what I work on is the rope going over him and waiting for him to get relaxed before I give that release. Now if I just focus on the fact that I need him to be relaxed and maybe release and lower his head every time the rope tosses over, if I try to focus on that right now in this very first session, then it's going to take so long and he's going to be fried by the time he gets to that point. Sometimes they just have to get okay and tolerate something before they get comfortable with it. So I'm also trying to kind of toss the rope under his belly area to prep him for maybe a girth in the future and also my hand going yes. under there right now to rub off all of the mud balls. Now we're introducing the rope for the leg. Him and Nora are kind of at a similar response area for this where they're, again, tolerating it, a little bit uncomfortable, but figuring it out. Introducing the hand to the chest and around the leg. I'm trying to get it again to that armpit area because I'm going to have to pull the rope through there. I would recommend the rope being the length of at least a lunge line or so. I think this one is probably 20, 22 feet, so it's a little bit shorter. Um, this also is a rope from Double Dan Horsemanship. I believe it's called their cold starting rope. So the tie on the end of it, there's no metal. Oh, that's another thing I should mention. Try to do this with a rope that doesn't have any metal on it. But the tie on the end of the Double Dan's ones, which are pretty cool, you can look them up if you want to see them. I don't know of anyone else that uses them is literally a rope so it's like a loop of rope and then this little like rope tie goes through the loop i don't know how to explain it i would just look it up or i'll try to show a close-up of it in another video but 
they are my favorite because there's no metal on them and you can make a loop inside the rope through if you need to. Stargazer here is pretty funny. His face is fairly relaxed and his eye is calm and again there's not really a big panic with me messing around with his leg here. There we go. So you try to just get them to stretch it out and reach and usually they lock their leg when it gets stretched out and then you just want them to gently place it down in front and step into it. Good. And the least amount of pressure on the lead rope possible would be perfect. You can see me kind of going to the side with it here to get him to turn and also maybe help him unstick it easier. And now how much of this should you do? I would say I like to be able to walk my horse forward maybe at least 20 to 30 feet or so. And now I'm showing you less in here. I'm showing you a way shorter amount, but now you're going to see how I'm dealing with him getting him to hold his leg up. Now, Stargazer had a little bit more of a resistant response to the leg coming up the way you would hold it to pick out a hoof. So we're going to do a lot of work just standing there in short periods, getting him to hold it and relax. Again, going and grabbing the hook and I believe this leg is the leg that doesn't lift up quite as far with him because he has an old injury to his knee and I believe there's just quite a bit of scar tissue there you'll notice that I didn't spend quite as much time on his leg um, with the rope on it as I did with Nora so I would try to critiquing myself here I would try to rub my hand along the leg a little bit more before I take that rope off and get him more comfortable maybe do like one or two more repetitions of it before I ask just with my hand to pick up the leg. Good job. That was so good. You're good. Champ. That was a really good response to there, just lifting it up with my hand. Leg? Now we're going to try this other side with him. And I forgot to mention, if you do have a horse that's really struggling with this and fighting and running and jumping away to the point where you can't even get them to hold it up, usually that only happens when you're asking them to bring it back as if you're holding up the hoof to pick it out. Um, you can usually work with them pretty easily leading them by the foot, but now if you're trying to get them to bend the knee backwards, then you may need a little bit more leverage. And what I do for this is I toss the rope over the back so basically either their withers or even sometimes their neck or their back is holding up their own leg. Now it's still me holding it up on the end of the rope but you can have a little bit more leverage like this and stick with them better if they try to move away from the pressure every single time. I try to not do that unless I really need to unless they keep getting away and I can't stick up with them but it is still a useful tool to know and I don't show it with either of these guys because neither of them needed it but basically you have the rope around the leg and then you toss it over the back or the withers or the neck and you can either stand on the other side of the horse to have that leverage to hold it up or you can toss the rope back under the horse's belly but then again remember you'd have to introduce girth pressure to them to be fair to add all these things at once and you can hold it up again from the same side. So I'm going to keep asking him to keep that leg up. Good. There was a little bit more softness that time, so there's the release. Try to stick with them as they're moving. The other thing you'll see me do sometimes is put my hand that's closest to them on their neck. That again is a little bit of a leverage to kind of push them away and encourage them to lift that leg up. 
You can tell this side is a little bit more protective for him, probably because of it being his good leg and him needing to use it a little bit more in the wild or for any reason to protect himself. So kind of him being vulnerable with that leg is a little bit more difficult. Because you think about it, their legs are really big tools for them to protect themselves. So for them to be able to give one up to a human who at this point is still kind of like a predator. So again, a little bit of an issue with him kind of getting stuck there. Wanting to kind of turn around and check me out with his nose a little fast. I don't know if he's wanting to go in for like a nip or anything. But again, trying to just stay easy with that. Good, and he lifted it up pretty nice that time. He's getting a little bit worried, so I'm going to just do a few more. Good. If you have a horse really struggling with it, just try to only hold it for a couple seconds. That way you can release before they start wanting to fight with it. There we go. Very nice. One other thing that's kind of random that I'll mention, but you notice when he went to go bite for like a fly on his shoulder or something, when they do that, I don't try to continue asking them to do something. I stay pretty quiet and let them do whatever they need to do to get a little bit more comfortable. Um, again, because I, I want to have it be more of a partnership and not, you know, get upset at them for moving their head away for a second. There we go. Sometimes you have to break it down and have it be a quicker pull up and release. And I can have a little bit more control over the hoof and hold it better too if I have my hand on it rather than just the rope. Now we're going to take the rope off of it. And I do like taking it off that way, although I could just, you know, pull it around one side of the leg and have it come off. But I feel like it's so almost an achievement point if I can have them hold their leg up long enough for me to get that loop off of it. And there Come you have on. it. That's how I introduced them how to pick up their feet for the first time and how to leap by their feet. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more content like this in addition to other horse content, please hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. I hope you guys all have a wonderful rest of your day.